Still Life, page 135. One day, Helen came home with something large and flat wrapped in brown paper. Look what I bought today, she said excitedly as she tore off the paper. A painting to go over the living room couch. Fruit in a bowl, Max said with a shrug. Big deal. This is fine art. It's called Still Life, Helen explained, and I think it's lovely. I dashed over to examine the painting, marveling at the colors and shapes. See, said Max's wife, Ivan likes it. Ivan likes to roll up poop and throw it at squirrels, Max said. <laughs> I couldn't take my eyes off the apple and bananas and grapes in the picture. They looked so real, so inviting, so edible. I reached out to touch a grape, and Helen slapped my hand. Bad boy, Ivan, don't touch, she jerked her thumb at Mac. Honey, go get a hammer and a nail, would ya? While Mac and Helen were busy in the living room, I wandered into the kitchen. A cake covered in thick chocolate frosting sat on the counter. I like cake, love it, in fact, but it wasn't eating I was thinking about, it was painting. The frosting peaked and dipped like waves on a tiny pond. It looked rich and gooey, dark and smooth. It looked like mud. I scooped up a handful of frosting. I scooped up another. I headed to the refrigerator door. It was perfect. An empty, white, waiting canvas. The frosting wasn't as easy to work with as jungle mud. It was stickier and, of course, more tempting to eat. But I kept at it. I scraped off every last bit of that frosting. I may have eaten a little cake, too. I don't remember what I was trying to paint. A banana, most likely. I suppose I knew what was going to get in... Sorry, I suppose I knew I was going to get in trouble. But at that moment, I just didn't care. I wanted to make something, anything, the way I used to. I wanted to be an artist again. Punishment. I soon learned that humans can screech even louder than monkeys. After that, I was never allowed in the kitchen. <laughs> Babies. Back in those days, the Big Top Mall was smaller. It had a pony ride, a wooden train that bustled around the parking lot, a few bed, bed-ragged parrots and surly spider monkey. But when Mac brought, brought me a baby gorilla dressed in a crisp tuxedo to the mall, everything changed. People came from far and wide to have their pictures taken with me. They brought me blocks and toys and guitar. They held me in their laps. Once I even held a baby in mine. She was small and slippery. Bubbles flowed from her lips. She squeezed my fingers. Her rear was puffy with padding. Her legs bowed like bent twigs. I made a face. She made a face. I grunted. She grunted. <laughs> I was so afraid she would fall that I squeezed her tightly and her mother yanked her away. I wonder if my mother ever worried about dropping us. We always held on, but that's easier to do when your mother's furry. Human babies are ug ugly lot. They're an ugly lot, but their eyes are like our baby's eyes. Too big for their faces and for the world. Beds. One day, after many weeks of loud talking, Helen packed a bag and slammed the front door and never came back. I don't know why. I never know why of humans. Never know the why of humans. That night, I slept with Mac in his bed. My old nests were woven of leaves and sticks and shapes like his bathtub, cool green cocoons. Mac's bed, like mine, was flat, hot with sticks or stars. Still, he made a sleeping sound like the rumble my father used to make when all was well, a sound from deep inside his belly. My place. Mac grew sullen. I grew bigger. I became what I was meant to be. Too large for chairs, too strong for hugs, too big for human life. I tried to calm, to stay calm, to move with dignity. I did my best to eat daintily. But humans were always hard to learn, especially when you're not a human. When I saw my new domain, I was thrilled. And who wouldn't have been? It had no furniture to break, no glasses to smash, no toilets to drop max keys into. It even had a tire swing. I was relieved to have my own place. Somehow, I didn't realize I'd be here quite so long. Now, I drink Pepsi, eat old apples, and watch reruns on TV. But many days, I forgot what I was supposed to be. Am I a human? Am I a gorilla? Humans have so many words, more than they truly need. Still, they have no name for what I am. 9,876 days. Ruby's finally asleep. I watch her chest rise and fall. 
Bob, too, is snoring, but my mind is still racing, for perhaps for the first time ever I've been remembering. It's an odd story to remember, I have to admit. My story has a strange shape, a stunted beginning, an endless middle. I could, I count all the days I've lived with humans. Gorillas count as well as anyone, although it's not a particularly useful skill to have in the wild. I've forgotten so many things, and yet I always know precisely how many days I've been in my domain. I take one of my magic markers Julia gave me. I make an X, a small one, on my painted jungle wall. I make more X's and more. I make an X for every day of my life with humans. My mar marks look like this. The rest of the night I mark the day and when I'm done, my wall looks like this. And so on until there are 9,876 X marks marking across my wall like a parade of ugly insects. 147, a visit. It's almost morning when I hear steps. It's Mac. He has a sharp smell. He weaves as he walks. He stands next to my domain. His eyes are red. He's staring out the window at the empty parking lot. Ivan, my man, he mumbles. Ivan? He presses his forehead against the glass. We've been through a lot, you and me.